Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen regular meeting, Monday, October 1st, 2018, at 7 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Announcements. Cultural Council, grant applications for 2018 will be accepted until Monday, October 15th. Anyone here from the Cultural Council? Council on Aging, uh, there's a walk-in flu clinic tomorrow, October 2nd, between 9.30 and 11 p.m., 11.30, and then followed up by another one on October 9th from 5 to 7 p.m. in the evening. Uh, minutes from September 17, 2018, the regular and the executive session. And of September 12, 2018. Uh, acceptance of the uh, September 12th meeting. Uh, um, I, I would request an edit be made to the September 12th minutes before we vote um, under the minutes on a motion made by Jennifer Dean Wing, seconded by Gerald Poser and the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously. It says that Erica Blake, Andrew Allward, and Thomas Hull abstain. Um, I believe I was the only one that abstained for that vote because I wasn't here for those minutes that were being voted on. Um. If I recall correctly, I think those minutes actually had um, Roland's name, and I think they were quite old, weren't they? Yeah, they were right, old. I abstained, but I don't believe Tom. No, he wasn't Andrew. on the board at that time either. Oh, neither? I think you abstained for this group. Yeah. And, and then you all had to abstain for that group because there was one that only had, there was a few that only had Joe and I's. Oh, is that all of those? So you didn't abstain from them, or you did, Andrew? Mr. Hull there, that meeting? So I don't remember. No, I don't believe so. Yeah, so. Yeah, he was. Because then that would have been the first vote, batch of minutes we three voted on. The next batch, you two just voted alone on. So then that means that the Mr. Hull should be still removed from that if he wasn't from the meeting, in the meeting. Because if he, he can't abstain if he's not here too. Right. You want to just save the 12th for the next meeting and yeah. go back to the tape and check it out? Yeah, yeah. because at yeah. the top it says Tom was here at the meeting. Yeah, so Tom I think we here. need to revisit these minutes before we vote on them. Mm -hmm. okay. Because, I mean, they're 17, 16, and 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So So we'll, we'll review the year. Okay, I think yeah. maybe that's a good idea. I make a motion to accept September 17th regular and executive session as written. Um, on the regular minutes, mm -hmm. I'd like to clarify on the public land auction. Um, there it says there will be a minimum bid for the parcels. I believe it's there will be a minimum deposit for the parcels. I don't believe there's a minimum bid. Is that correct, mm -hmm. um, Justin? Correct. There's so a $10,000 deposit. Deposit, so I believe that needs to be changed. So we'll, we'll correct. Yep, correct. I'll make a motion. Um, I revise my motion to include that change. Okay, a second. Roll. Aye. 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 We make a motion to table um, September 12th minutes till next meeting. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion to table September 12th minutes till our next regularly scheduled meeting. I second. Mm -hmm. 
Aye. 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 Uh, departments and boards. Um, Chief Landry is uh, appointed uh, Patricia Coder as an on-call firefighter uh, for fire and EMS. Um, there was a lot of indicating interest from uh, Ms. Coder. Uh, we don't hear a motion. We don't have to appoint mm -hmm. her. Okay. Chief has that. Okay. Just letting us know. Yep. It's good to see some local on-call people. Okay, next on the agenda uh, is uh, correspondence and the first piece of correspondence we I'm sorry. <laughs> Public forum. I just I still have not heard from Brian Can you, can you just come up so they can <laughs> we can just have it for the record? about the wall yeah yes. i know um brian and i have had a conversation i know he's been busy with chestnut hill road and those things so i will um ask. i would just like to know timeline of getting yep. this fixed it needs to be fixed before there's a hot frost the wall is in that section that was hit has been pushed back five inches okay. there's pieces of what was cemented in removed so the weather needs to be warm enough to re-cement that okay so he needs to address it sooner than later. Yeah, I know he's been dealing with a few, so you know, Ironstone Street and Chestnut Hill Road and, and those things, but I will remind him of that. Yeah, and I also went to Home Depot and got markers to put right in front of it this year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. We'll move mm -hmm. on to uh, correspondence. Uh, the fall municipal energy uh, series. Uh, the uh, MMA is uh, creating an energy strategy for uh, municipalities. Uh, Constellation Energy experts uh, in the forum will uh, discuss the current market drivers and uh, influencing uh, energy uh, rates. There are three sessions scheduled. All meetings are from 8 to 10 p.m. On October 10th, uh, on a Wednesday, it'll be in Raynham, in the Veterans uh, Memorial uh, Town Hall, 558 South Main Street, Raynham. I believe Raynham is the closest facility of the three to uh, Millville residents. Uh, and then on Thursday, October 18th, at the uh, in Springfield, at the Springfield Department of Public Works, uh, and then on Thursday, October 25th in uh, Lawrence, on Havel Street in Lawrence, at the Council on Aging. We have uh, our monthly report from MES Water, uh, a report from uh, Northeast uh, Water Solutions, and uh, the report indicates it's, uh, you know, in the past, uh, these things just went to the executive secretary or the, unless there was a, an issue, mm -hmm. and they were put into a binder. Um, this, uh, this report is fine. Uh, uh, there are no problems. Everything is compliant. And uh, uh, that was good news to see. Um, I do just want to say that um, sometimes Facebook can be a good thing because I was back in my memories and in 2013 I was at Worcester Department of Environmental Protection with you around a round table with this company and the company we had before in the state and since that time we've had minimum issues. So it's been a good, strong five years with this company in providing us um, quality, um, the green sand filter, um, which we were all educated over many hours, but um, that was five years ago. So it's good to see that they're 
you know, it's working and it's it's positive. So you get darn much. good memory because I, <laughs> I told you Facebook <laughs> told me. <laughs> Facebook Facebook told me, but yes, I. And I'll share a funny story after though. <laughs> Can't do it right now. But it's I just it was you know it was a lot of money we spent, um, so it's good to know that it's leveled off. Okay, on uh, move on to item seven A, which is a scheduled uh, selectman's workshop, and uh, I put it on the warrant in that uh, I, I, we need the select board scheduled uh, workshops to address uh, policy, financial policy, and procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, we attempted a start um, back in uh, almost going on two years now and uh, we need to get together uh, mr cole has uh, given us um, an exemplar of policy and procedure i have copies here that uh, i'll share with you all mm -hmm. and uh, i would like to break it up amongst us mm -hmm. to go through it uh, and reflect back on uh, the references to uh, mass general laws mm -hmm. and uh, rewrite those policies uh, reflecting Millville as opposed to town uh, of Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. So I, I would need your availability uh, to do this so we can, we can do it one on one. I, uh, I can cover them, cover it, those policies with you. And basically, uh, it's going through them, marking them up, and typing mm -hmm. them up. And I think what we had done is we had um, broken, and you had shared this with me um, the other day, is that we had broken them up so that they were fairly even in the number of pages. Yeah. So there were some people covering one section, but it may have been a longer section versus someone else might have two sections, but page-wise, they are right. equal. And I think what we were going to do is just kind of give it a first glance over, yeah. kind of make our notes, where do we want to make right. changes? And so instead of us all tackling all of it, that we would each take a section, uh, jigsaw puzzle, come back to the table, and, and then share um, what we had seen and, yeah. and what we were going to do. Um, Andrew was on the board at the time, and... Uh, we, Roland. Roland uh, is no longer here. Right. I think it was. Yeah. Jen Dean Wing. Are you giving me mine now? Um, it wasn't, it's not crazy pages. So, so I'm going to do good Mr. Who here. I'll leave <coughs> that with him. Maybe I'm wrong. I, gotta know. I just got a second Thomas one. Thomas in here. He should get the longest section <laughs> tonight. <tennis. laughs> I think when we did it, we really... Yeah. Yeah, Andrew. Ten. Did you separate it by specific, just by sections, by length, or I any think we expertise, did it by, or anything of that nature? Or? I think we did it just by length, and, and then we kind of said yeah. which one would you like to do. I think that's how it was done. So, Mrs. Blake, I have two for you. And all we have to do now is set a meeting. A meeting. So I'm I'm okay if we have a standalone meeting or if we have one like an hour before our regular scheduled meeting. I'm fine either way. I don't what, know what works best for When everyone. are we looking to start these meetings? Um, well, the, the thing is, the, the, there is a sense of urgency here. Okay. In that we need to get through all this and get it approved at the spring town meeting. Okay, so there's the deadline. Is, okay. And in, in the interim, uh, if you have questions, feel free to call me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you'd like, on an individual basis, we can get together and go through these things. So what's everyone's preference, individual or group? <clears throat> Before the meeting, 
Okay. It's better that way we're already open. Our next scheduled meeting is two weeks from tonight. 15th? Okay. So you want to do a six o'clock workshop? Six o'clock yeah. workshop. Mm -hmm. So do we want to all try to have, be ready for that night or have certain sections ready for that night? Uh, basically, have your mock-up done. Okay. Make it sound like it's Millville and not Uxbridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it does reference the charters and, and things like that. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Anyone else for form? This is just under new business. New business, oh, I'm sorry. You're Russian. You're yes. Russian. No, I'm good. Okay. Moving on to 7B, uh, Mr. Cole. Closing the FY18 budget is going uh, well to date. Uh, we're uh, looking at a mechanism for trying to cover the remaining FY18 snow and ice deficit uh, from last year. So it was approximately $102,000. What we're wrestling with is that $102,000 deficit flows into the FY19 tax rate, which is further uh, complicating our FY19 budget problem. Uh, we're working to see if we can do uh, a late transfer um, of remaining FY18 uh, unspent departmental appropriations that would close out against um, that snow and ice deficit. So normally unspent uh, departmental appropriations flow to free cash, but then it's going to be offset by the deficit anyway. Yeah. Um, so rather than loving this roll forward and kicking the can down the road again and having it affect the FY19 budget, um, with the Board of Selectmen, with the concurrence of the Finance Committee, uh, we'd like to propose a, a final transfer to close that deficit. It would allow us to uh, eliminate that from the tax rate, and it would, it would reduce from the uh, current FY19 budget deficit. So from the presentation that we gave last time, that $102,000 is a factor of uh, the deficit that we've been speaking about. Um, so that would eliminate that part of the deficit. Um, so to transfer this late, is that is that something we can just do in town? Because my understanding was that we only had a certain time frame in which we could do those. So that's what we're exploring right now. We'd like the Department of Revenue mm -hmm. to um, give us the official uh, nod that we'd be able to move forward with okay. this. Uh, given the current uh, situation that the town is in, uh, it would certainly be helpful you know in resolving our issues if not um, if we're allowed to do it uh, this late in the game it would drop the deficit um, down significantly and if not we're still at two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars you know we can cover that a little bit more in the next agenda item but so as it stands right now the close uh, we're not going to move forward on the close right now until we get this issue resolved um, depending on what the outcome of that decision is, has a fairly substantial impact on what the next step on the actual close itself is. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> we expect probably in the next week or two to have an update on what that is. If there's no issue moving forward with the end of year transfer, um, then we'll have that ready for you for your next regularly scheduled meeting. And um, pending approval, we'll have the finance committee scheduled to uh, also review and approve that transfer. So it's 102 above and beyond budgeted for snow and ice. Is that the deficit is? For FY18, correct. Okay, for FY18. And I understand you haven't closed out the year yet, but there are sufficient funds and left over in all, all the other departments correct. to cover yeah. that. If, okay. if it were covered, the net the net remaining appropriation would be $17,000. Okay. $17,000. It's like seventeen six ninety six. And you said if the 102 is removed. Correct. So for, the, for FY18. So it will affect that free, so we'll go another I mean, year. The free, the free cash will be zero again. With zero. Right. I mean, but, but. You get to spend it. So we'll, you get a, we'll, we'll, right. I mean, your bills. 
it, it's it's all the same you know whether it gets resolved it's you know you you may end up with a higher free cash but it's going to be off or not if you can't balance fy19 right so it's all the same money it's mm-hmm. just you know order of operations how it gets handled okay when do we um know if the dor will so i would reasonably expect probably by the beginning of next week okay. so so by your next meeting um we'll let you know in advance if that's something that we can move forward with or not okay thank you thank you you're still on Old business budget deficit progress report. So, um, as it stands, so we last reported that the budget deficit is as it stands with identified budget cuts, identified uh, changes in revenues was two hundred and fifty-five thousand three sixty-six, uh, as we just spoke about in. Uh, Item 7B, if we're able to adjust for the snow and ice, it would reduce the deficit to 112,671. So it's a significant, uh, it's a significant change. The remaining 112,671, uh, we believe there's uh, minor additional cuts that we've identified that we're still researching uh, what their impact would be and what the effect of implementing them partially through the year would be. Can I ask you one, to back up one minute? You said 102 for ICE, 255 is the de- deficit. If we took the 102 out, what did you say the number was, Justin? Uh, it's going to be 112,671. I feel like I'm missing something. Th- there's some other adjustments, oh, minor okay. adjustments to revenue. Okay. So 255 and then right. down to okay. 112. Yeah. There's about 13 other smaller things. Okay. If you want to I just want to make them. sure my math wasn't off. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we'll be down to the 112,000 or so. Uh, we've identified a number of other cuts, which would bring it right around the $100,000 mark. That's about as far as uh, we can reasonably take it at that point. So then we're going to look back to the board and the finance committee um, for some guidance on how, how you want to proceed next, right? So there's not a lot of options, but there are options. Um, option uh, one is continued cuts, right? So we've taken the cuts as far as we can go without closing additional departments, uh, laying off employees, um, or otherwise um, you know, detrimentally closing government. Um, we don't think there will be a lot of relief, if any, on the revenue side, so that's not really an option. So then option B is there are the uh, estimated proceeds from the sale of the auction. We obviously won't know what the proceeds of the sale of the auction are for uh, at least a month at this point. Um, however, you know, it'll be using a one-time revenue, right? So we won't be taking it out of stabilization. We'll be taking it out of free cash. We won't be reducing reserves by using it as a one-time revenue however you know we have to acknowledge that whatever that number is that we plug that's automatically what we start in deficit for fy20 right so you know we're looking to you know the board of selectmen and the finance committee to uh, help decide what the direction will be to close that final bit you know acknowledging that uh, if we use a one-time revenue that you know, will automatically be in the same exact position on July 1st next year. Uh, and so we have to come up with a strategy of, again, is it additional cuts? We know our costs will increase going into FY20. We know the school will increase. We know all of our municipal side costs will increase. Um, there are other revenue streams uh, potentially on the horizon. You know, there's been some discussion about uh, you know, solar host agreements, marijuana host agreements. Mm-hmm. So the town is pursuing other revenue options. However, until those things are, you know, signed and in the books, yeah. um, you know, I mean, they're not available to even estimate on at this point. Um, so potentially for FY20, there's an initial additional net revenue, net new revenue um, that maybe it negates um, the one-time revenue that we use this year, but there's the potential that there's not, right? And so it's prudent to err on the side of caution at this point and assume that those things won't pan out until they actually do pan out. So uh, again, as we continue to move forward um, toward the special town meeting, 
um, we'll update you on what the cuts are and we'll continue to update you on where we think the um, budget deficit is for the time being. Um, and so that our next update will be at the your next scheduled meeting on 1015. Thank you. Thank you. On old business uh, 8B, this is um, this has to do with the uh, fire control panel at the elementary school. Uh, that work will commence this coming uh, Friday. Hopefully, to get will get done over the weekend. Um, contracts are signed. Yep. And. Uh, quote for the um, the electrical plus is thirty thirty eight thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and the elect electrical portion is nine thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Right? Right. So hopefully uh, Problem gets solved. Selectman's form. <coughs> Anyone have anything? Um, I'm all set. Nothing to me. Okay, I said my piece on the the bylaws. <coughs> Administrator's report. The uh, joint meeting that was scheduled for Wednesday, September 26th. So we uh, attended the regional school joint meeting. So you know, at the at the conclusion of the last meeting, it was decided that you know we would get together on you know a quarterly or a regular basis. Uh, the board of selectmen and finance committee of Millville, Blackstone, and then the regional school committee. Uh, we convened Wednesday the 26th at the elementary school. Um, I thought it was very informational. Uh, I applaud the superintendent's efforts to identify um, where their deficiencies as a school are in terms of both uh, capital operations and curriculum. Um, I'm looking forward to his uh, financial review in the November, December time frame, you know, on where he thinks the costs will be for FY20, he did note that there were uh, a growing list of uh, capital and maintenance items um, that were a concern of the school district. Um, some of those related to the high school would, you know, be some portion uh, allocated back to us, um, and uh, ma many others were, you know, related specifically to some of the Blackstone buildings. Um, Again, as they continue to put costs together, you know, I talked to the superintendent um, after the meeting as well as the school committee chair about, you know, our need to continually just evaluate what those costs will be. Um, I mean, obviously, it's it, we don't need to continue to say that, you know, we're in a little bit of a budget crunch here, right, and we're having a, a problem getting our budget balanced. But, um, you know, as they make decisions, if we can be kept in the loop on um, what those costs will be, if they're going to borrow, if they just need it to be budgeted, um, you know, and then if they're moving forward with any of these MSBA projects, you know, obviously it, it commits the town to uh, a 20 plus year, um, you know, commitment to whatever money that we take. Typically, those are done on debt, debt exclusions. <clears throat> right. Right. So at the meeting, they talked about the 50,000 for Middle Elementary. Um, they emailed late Friday afternoon. Um, trying to get some information in regards to the Warren article. Do you happen to know if they were able to speak to someone today here about that? I will have to follow up with you on that. Okay. I do not know. Okay. Uh, Diane and I met earlier today. Okay. But that wasn't one of the items that came Because up. if I recall correctly in the past, um, Mr. Himmelberger, um, on one of those, I think it was the BMR roof, I'm, I could be wrong, but they incurred that first cost and then they came back to us for the portion that wasn't reimbursable because they knew we were in a tight spot. And I'm not sure if that's something 
that they would be willing to consider? Because what was it? Was it engineering or the Yeah, usually it's like a feasibility study type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so I think what happened is before when it was the high school, the school department paid for it. And the percentage they didn't get reimbursed for through MSBA, then the towns had to pay their portion. And I'm just wondering if that's something in our conversation with them, if that's something they'd be willing to do since uh, the super town meeting allotted some money, which my understanding is not in their operational budget, but in their E&D accounts. So that might be something that they might be willing to assist and work with us so that we don't have another 50000 on top of our... 255,000 Yeah, I mean, I've seen different towns do it different ways, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, the most um, maybe common way is that, I mean, it's allocated up front, right? But then the reimbursement is allocated back too. But, mm -hmm. I mean, so it really comes down to, I mean, the, the school department does have, you know, a cash crunch like we do as well, right? right? And so, I mean, I think that's one of those items that we're going to need we need to remain very engaged with them in terms of how they want to handle it or if there's a way to break those costs up. Um, mm -hmm. MSBA nowadays is extremely efficient in their reimbursement, right? So if you look at projects even 10 years ago, uh, it was it was years to get all your money back. Okay. Um, now, if you if you do the timing right on a lot of these items, it's it's weeks, right? So because that um, would be like just about half our stabilization, right? Right. So I think it's certainly worth asking. It's certainly a lot easier. Uh, and probably more efficient to have the school department be the lead on that and receive the reimbursements and then settle it up at the end mm -hmm. uh, or settle it up at you know various points within the project. Sometimes feasibility studies can um, linger and, 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 and they take a bit of time. Um, but I'm confident that you know given the attitude of the school administration at that meeting that you know we can come together to come up with a solution that okay. works. I didn't. Uh put a copy of that memo from the assistant superintendent in my folder. So. I thought they, didn't he email everybody, all the selectmen? Okay. He did. All right. Um, I'll have to check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was late Friday. You were not around. No. If you'd like, I could take a ride to the uh, superintendent's office tomorrow and speak with Mr. Ethan Hall. Uh, Matt. Okay. Ten B electrical aggregation. Good news. Um, National Grid came out with their rates. Uh, if you, if you're elect. Uh, if you uh, your energy source, electrical energy source of National Grid, residential, it's uh, $0.13718 per kilowatt hour. Commercial, 0.1366 per kilowatt hour. Industrial is $0.14761 per kilowatt hour. The good news is the town of Millville itself the, uh, the municipal buildings. We locked in with uh, on a, uh, aggregation uh, bid with Colonial Power, and we locked in at 0.114. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. So uh, next, uh, before we adjourn, uh, we'll do signatures if there are any left. Just the, the detour, which I'm very excited for. Okay. <laughs> do you want to explain that Sure, one? I will. So we've got notification from Rhode Island DOT that they're going to be um, fixing on their, ridge, uh, their bridge projects. Um, they will be doing the Old Great Road, which is the Providence Street connector out to 146A, the small bridge with the tunnel that everyone beeps in. Um, so they'll be closing that street down with detours, so people will have to go up um, 
you know, 146A to Central Street in order to get around the way they couldn't go last year. The way they couldn't go last year, yeah. and everyone was coming down my street, <clears throat> so now nobody can come down my street. Um, <laughs> so um, that the bridge is um, the opening date of the advertising of that bridge is this Friday. So it's a, it's it's a, a one day. Oh, it's just a one day detour? Nope. No, no the, oh. pro the bridge project is going out to bid yeah. this Friday. So what the time frame is from there. But it's coming. It's just, it could probably be a month or two oh, away. Oh, I thought it was starting on October 1st. Yeah, okay. It's the bid opening. We're going to do some engineering on it, right? Yeah. First. They don't have a start date okay. of the, the detours, but you're going to start to see the signs and the yeah. whole. Once they hire a company, then they put up the yeah. signage and they get everything going. So that is coming. So if everyone who uses Old Great Road, Connector Road, Providence Street, will need to make adjustments while there because they seem to. Thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome. That's now it's signatures. Might be a new record, Joe. Hurry up. Might be a new record. A <laughs> football game last night, right? Oh, it's yeah. Monday Night Football. That's why he's rushing. I'm just going to go and put tabs in his book. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, do you have anything to assign, Justin? No. We just have the minutes. Uh, no, nope, nothing 17. assigned tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, send the minutes from the 17th. Mm -hmm. Who has them? Well, you can go to my virgin copy here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I wrote on mine. No, I didn't write on mine. So if you wrote on yours, we can use mine. Just need the signature. Yeah. Show me. Is that? You want mine? Yeah, this is clean. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. That one. Next regular meeting will be uh, Monday, uh, October 15th. Uh, there'll be a workshop. Uh, that'll be at uh, 7 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 7 o'clock regular meeting. 7 o'clock regular meeting. Perfect. Workshop at 6. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.